Hi everyone, welcome to the Umbrellas webinar. I'm going to do a brief introduction and then I'll hand over the microphone to Liliana and then we will also have question and answer sessions in between the talk. A little bit about Data Umbrella, we are a community for the underrepresented persons in data science and we are a nonprofit organization. We have a team at the Umbrella who help uh, make the events uh, a reality. So here on the talk, we have Reshma, who has already introduced herself. She's a statistician and data scientist, and you can find her on Twitter, LinkedIn, and GitHub as Reshma S. And I'm Beryl Kanali. I'm also a statistician and data scientist. We have a code of conduct, and we are dedicated to providing a harassment-free experience for everyone. And we thank you for helping make the Umbrella a welcoming community. You can support the Umbrella in various ways, so following a code of conduct so that everyone feels uh, welcomed and collaborative. And then we also have a Discord a community chat where you can ask and answer general questions there, share events, jobs, and any other helpful material. You can also support us by donating to our nonprofit. We are on Open Collective as the Umbrella, and we are also on Benevity, which is a company matched platform. For example, if you donate a uh, hundred dollars, your company matches the same donation. We also have a YouTube channel where we have over sixty videos of our various events, and the video to this event will also be posted there in the next 24 to 48 hours if you feel like going back and uh, viewing it again. We have various libraries libraries in our YouTube channel. We have a playlist on career advice. We also have other playlists like data visualization, contributing to open source, uh, PyMC, and NumPy. You can also sign up to our monthly newsletter. We are on Substack as the Umbrella, and we release our newsletter, uh, our newsletter once a month, and we promise not to spam you. Mm -hmm. We also have our website at thetumbrella.org where you can find resources on uh, open source mm -hmm. guidelines on inclusive language, accessibility and responsibility, burnout and AI ethics. We are on all social media platforms as the Umbrella. You can also find us on GitHub, where we have issues that you can work on. You can also uh, join our meetup group, where we post all our events, and we actually have uh, two or more events per month. Uh, we have a call for volunteers. Uh, we have several videos on our YouTube channel that need uh, uh, transcripts and timestamps. Uh, for example, if you are interested in doing the timestamps for this video, you can head over to our GitHub and you'll pick that issue and get to work on it. You can add the timestamps partially. You don't have to do the whole timestamps if the video is too long. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the next event will be on September 13th, which will be on machine learning in JavaScript and it will be an introduction to TensorFlow uh, To today's talk, today's talk is how to build your personal brand with your customer in mind. And our speaker is Liliana, Liliana Petrova, and a little bit about her. She is the founder and CEO of Customer Experience Consulting Firm, the Petrova Experience. As the director of Petrova Experience, she pioneered a customer centric culture that energized more than 15,000 employees. Uh, it, for example, it's the correction, uh, not as, as the jet. I was in the JetBlue experience, the JetBlue company. I was not in the Petrov experience when I did that. Oh, okay. okay so sure. at JetBlue, she uh, helped the employees and an award in future travel experience and popular science for her JFK lobby redesign and facial recognition program. She's committed to helping brands create seamless experiences and cultures that support them. She's an active member of SEI and hosts, hosts webinar series for aviation and healthcare professionals to tackle the changing dynamic of travel and healthcare experience. You can find her on LinkedIn and Twitter. And with that, uh, I can now hand over the microphone to Liliana. Uh, this will be an um, interactive um, session, so feel free 
to ask or answer any questions if asked. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, hello, everyone. <clears throat> Again, we have a question in the chat. It would be very helpful if you uh, are able to uh, uh, let us know what's your preferred preference so I know where to spend more time. We've only heard from um, Igor, Stephanie, and Lucy. Thank you very much. Um, if we, you know, I'm seeing Alan is on, Yelena, um, if you can, Victor, uh, Fabian, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but just let me know um, if you uh, have joined here for your personal or professional, in other words, like, is it for a company or is it for your, um, um, okay, Christine, that makes uh, sense. It helps me understand where you are, uh, just so I know how to talk about this. Another thing I wanted to say is this is essentially your hour, right? This is not, <clears throat> you know, this is not one of those hard skills that, uh, you know, uh, webinars you're going to attend. Um, and it's uh, it's going to be best if, as I speak, you raise your voice and or chat and tell me what are your challenges? What is, what is preventing you from having... Uh, a brand that you like that you project and then essentially what um what stage of, of of branding are you in is it do you even know what's your brand you know all of this good stuff uh, whatever it comes to mind uh reach out um the real time and we'll talk about this so let's let's start so this is me um this is me a few years ago i'm pretty proud of this event and there's the reason i put it here um, but if you look at me here, um, what you immediately can see is that I um, am in travel and hospitality. I am um, a customer experience person and I like red. So already, um, oh, and I like speaking. I like public speaking because I'm there with this mic. Not everyone likes that. So why I started with this is because I really uh, wanted to say that you can um, project the brand with visuals in a very powerful way. So visuals are extremely powerful um, vehicle that in today's age, when we turn off our cameras, we lose. So the first thing um, I really venture for you to say and to urge, urge you to do is to have as many calls as you can with your cameras on because having your camera on or off is a brand in itself. And again, these are small things that we probably don't talk and think about, but if you have a client call and you're consistently the one person with the camera on, you will stand out. Um, so it's as easy as that. So what is a personal brand? A personal brand is what people think of when they hear your name. It is really that simple. You're mentioned in the room, you're not in the room. What are people going to say about you? What are they going to think of that you can do or not do for them? That is essentially the business of perceptions. Your personal brand is how are you perceived by others? And that is a very important thing to think about because perceptions are very whimsical. Perceptions are something that you have to manage. Otherwise, you you either don't know what they are, or they are things you may or may not know or, um, you're projecting. And, and in general, what a brand is, is this consistent expression of values and visual characteristics. And I'm going to keep talking about visuals because it is quite important that you have consistency of a visual identity as well. That may be, if you're a person, how you dress up. It may be how your color scheme is. For example, on this slide, I'm consistent with my brand colors in my brand, which is the Petrova experience. But I also have a special font that I'll be using throughout this presentation. If I don't do that, I, that branding and that uh, uniqueness of me is not going to come out, but also that consistency of me presenting me as a one unit is not gonna come. If I had slides with different fonts, different formats, copy and pasting from different decks and making one presentation for you, that would not have been a branded presentation. 
it would have been copying and pasting different people's inputs in one, which would take my presence away. And I think that's an important thing to, to think about is that branding also is about presence. If you don't brand yourself or you don't brand your company, you essentially are losing your presence in the, in the discourse you're in. So how do you build your brand? You build your brand with your actions, with your choices and time prioritization. And I put this time prioritization in the last five years, I'll be honest with you, as I got a little older, that probably wasn't on this slide five, 10 years ago, but as I have now ch child and more, less time, now time prioritization also became a thing for me. So what do you, what do I mean by actions and choices? Well, who you're gonna, who you gonna, like, let's say I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with something more simple, but it's, it's not really simple. Are you going to tell somebody the truth or no, even if it hurts? Are you going to choose a, a client or some action to do or, or get a job for a reason that is not monetary? That could be a value that drives your decision and a choice that may not be something that is obvious to others. In other words, that represents your brand. Have you ever done something for pro bono because you just believe in the cause? That may be something that is representing again your values and your brand is that you want to engage in the world in a different way. And from a time prioritization, branding is really about, let's say, and I'll go to me to give you some tangible examples, but I'm a loyal friend. For me, as time goes on, my brand of loyalty, of being a good friend and a good partner comes from sacrificing my time for other things to give to others. So I'm prioritizing the time that I could be doing something, even let's say self-care or something internal to, for myself to give to others. That over time makes that brand come out as, hey, this woman is a good friend. Now that may not be yours because you may be prioritizing something else, but it is part of your branding. You know, as a, as a parent, are you like, how, what percentage of your time goes to your parenting? That is part of your brand as well. And if you are working for somebody as, as a customer client relationship, right? Again, are you uh, prioritizing your client time over yourself? Let's say you have a visit. Even yesterday, somebody asked us, even that is a big decision. Somebody asked us, hey, we scheduled an in-person meeting, but now one person is not coming to the office. Do you want A, to come in the office next Friday, or do you wanna do a Zoom call earlier? That is a branding decision that's masked in a scheduling decision. Because when I answered, for me, in-person is very important. I will make sure we come in person next week. Immediately signal that guy that what many things, right? Someone might say I'm old school. Another person might say she still is dedicated to travel. She's gonna give me her time to go extra mile and come to my office. Another person might say she wants to build a relationship. For her, that's not a transaction. That's not just another Zoom call. She's actually coming in to form a deeper bond. So when we answered that, the answer came back with, I believe in that too, looking forward. So with that choice I made yesterday, I displayed characteristics about my brand in a very meaningful way that may or may not help this guy later on choose me over somebody else who didn't make that trip. And that's the power of the brand. The, the hardest part about branding is that when you make these decisions and when you do this, you do not see the return. It is not engineering, it is not data, but it comes back to you later. And it could be that they say in French, you know, je ne sais quoi, you know, je, I don't know what it is, but I know this woman is a fit. When they say you're a culture fit, I'm trying to get you guys out of my way. 
you're a good fit, you, you fit us. What does that mean? That is a perception, that's a feeling that is made by these choices and prioritizations that you've been doing over time that compounded to that perception that you're a good fit. If, if you go on a call with a customer or any prospect and you see some sort of a behavior that's happening, right? Whatever it is, that is an expression of their culture and their brand to you. So now if you want to be a good match, you kind of have to read the room and make that be part of your operation. So if you go on a call and everybody's chatting, go freaking chat. If people are speaking up, speak up. Today, I'm setting the brand and communication to say, I want interactions. So if you want to match with me, you would interact in the same way. So every little thing in your interactions with people is part of how you build your brand. And the beauty is you can be intentional about it. You can be very much intentional and design that. So it, the only thing you need to know is what makes it. And the truth of it is everything does. The most ungrateful part about branding is that it's almost like micromanagement and the most unforgiving thing. So consistency is key. Whatever you do, you got to keep at it. You can't go like that because then people are like, who is that person? Which version of that person is the real version? So you kind of choose who you are and you display who you are over and over to nausea so that people can kind of connect your name with these things that you're displaying. So here I am, what's my brand, right? First thing, I'm a very proud Bulgarian and you can see that in my company page that we'll see later. You can see this in my Instagram feed. You can see that as my person around me because I'm gonna bore you to death with my holidays and give you all the trinkets of Eastern Europe. It is also part of my accent. It is who I am. It is part of my brand. I am I am non non you know non one nation person. And that branding is something that I had struggled with. That's what I'm starting with. Because I used to try to kind of hide that. And it took one of the biggest genius communications master she's managing communications of the Mets now to challenge me in one meeting and said, why are you hiding that about your brand? First of all, at the time, I didn't even know it was my brand because I was a junior person. But secondly, she was like, that's who you are. You have to own it and, and be proud of it because it is what made you who you are today. Why I'm starting with this is because we all have these things that we think, especially now with diversity, everybody talks about diversity, but really this is what it is about, is our unique construct of where we're from, what culture we bring to the table, what language we bring to the table is something to infuse in our branding and not try to hide or downplay because you are bringing a new look to the world with your cultural diversity which is making you richer partner for any thinker on the other side. It's not taking away from you. It is, it is actually an asset. And my, my, my kind of venture to you is, is be proud of that and, and wear it with, with, with distinctions, a, a distinction, if you will. So let's talk about my brand. What am I known about? When you meet anyone, I'm not in the room, what they'll tell you? They'll tell you Liliana is a risk taker. How did I display that in my actions in the different phases of my life, right? First, I immigrated by myself, which by itself signals people ahead of time. They can check my LinkedIn and say, oh, she moved. That's one. But then in my business choices, I would take jobs that expand me, that I'm not fully ready for, leaning into people, taking risks, making assumptions in budgets not being afraid to quote, even as simple as that, that was a risk taker move that 
help me in my branding because now when there were people that were like, I need to get this thing done, they would go to somebody who wants everything to be anal, you know, to be completely 150% sure of the thing. They would not say anything. They would stole the meetings because if somebody comes to you and says, how much is that going to cost? And you're like, oh, I got to get back to you. And then I got to talk to these 15 people. And then I'm going to maybe nothing's getting decided. If at that same meeting, I say, let me take a swag between 200 and 500, now you have, you've given input so the next decision can be made. So all of these things for some people were a great asset because with this risk-taking, I was more comfortable with uncertainty or with something that's not 100%. That is a brand that I think, and it's a dimension in business that's extremely important. And if you all want to have your businesses in single or multiple teams, you need to think about that and be able to, to kind of wear that for you. I'm a truth teller. That is a very, very big thing too, especially in consulting, especially when you're on your own. And it is it is integrity, some people call it integrity, which is part of, of the branding of a company. But as a person, you need to know where are you on that spectrum? Because if you have the brand of Truth Teller, which is what I have, people will love you for it and people will hate you for it. See? So you got to know you're that so that when the hate comes, you can wear it. We can carry it. And it's not something that I have taken lightly. It's not something that hasn't manifested itself through the years in different forms, but it's part of who I am. It's part of my branding. And every time I've tried to go against it, I can't sleep. It's that simple for me. I can't sleep. So I, I don't have any moral battles, but I needed to know that that's the person I am. So when friction comes, I can carry it. Now, again, this is something that I've worked on for years and I'm th thoughtful about. Loyal friend, I already spoke about, but loyalty is a big thing, by the way. And also loyalty comes also from bosses. It comes to colleagues. Are you featuring other people's work? Are you taking credit for other people? This, there's, a, there's a deep depth to loyalty that and sacrifice in loyalty that also is a, a, a branding thing that I think you need to think about. Leadership, I put inspiration in brackets, I was going to say question mark, because it's kind of like self-proclaimed, but I have evidence that people have told me inspirational, so I put it in brackets so I can talk to you about this a little bit, because leadership is also a thing, right? And it's again, are you an executor, which is not a bad thing, just so you know, being an executor and being a great executor is a phenomenal brand. The, but there is a, a difference between a leader and an executor and, and knowing where you are and just again, go and sell that that you are as a, as a brand, as a person, as a professional person is it's a great thing to do. Because if you go and you say, I'm a leader, but you prefer that somebody already has done all that work and you just know what needs to be done and you do it seamlessly and perfectly, then you're going to struggle. So stay where you are and be comfortable. I, I wouldn't say I'm a terrible executor, but I need people that are organized, that are project managing, that are much more structured than me because I'm a leader. I'm that person. I'm the big picture person. I'm the charismatic person. I'm, I can go into political. Da, da, da. I, for the life of me, cannot do a great project plan, but I know that. So I don't freaking put that on my brand. I, Hire for it. I surround myself with people that I compensate for it. Life and diversity lover. I think that's an important one because again, it's one thing to say I'm diverse. So again, diversity is one of those things that um, especially today is a very, very sensitive word. Well, how did I express this? Well, I married an Indian man. I don't think that it gets any more open-minded than marrying a culture from an Eastern European that probably, I don't know, Eastern Europe, how many people um, have seen that, but I have 
people that did not attend my wedding. Let's just put it that way. And so the, the, the openness to life is something that cannot just be said. And what I'm lately kind of a little irked about is that people like to talk. You need to do something about these things, not just talk about them, right? And do you live that is, you know, who is your friend and all these things are actually important. And I, and, and it's also, when I say diversity, it's also diversity of thinking. And that also in corporate America is expressed very much into hiring decisions, right? Who you hire, we've talked and you've read a lot about that, but it's it's, it's a truth and a, and a fact that we kind of like to hire ourselves. So when, when, when we say, do you have a diverse team? That means you truly are getting people with very different skill sets and you are the common denominator. You don't have duplication. You don't have the same way of thinking, the same skill set on the team. When I say life lover, again, traveling, people know I'm always on the go somewhere. The more foreign the culture, the more interesting for me the trip is. I love all of that. I love a good party. People know I party. Milestones, birthdays, you like I just seek occasions to party. And I'm 42 and I still am like, I want to party because I love life. And I think it deserves celebrating it. You know, how I got here, yeah, through a lot of people dying around me, sickness and all that, but I didn't channel that into the negativity. I channeled it to, I owe all of these people to live life to the fullest. So it's a brand for me. So people know working with me, around me, will be a part, they will be a part at one point. Now, is that something good or bad? I don't know. It's just part of my brand and people know about that. You should have seen my wedding. It was like the best wedding ever. You know, it's just how I am. And then I have this classy woman thing that I added. And I added it only because of the global aspect of this specific webinar. Because I think that what I'm learning even, you know, through diversity is that I really am making more of a of an effort because of my Eastern European background. Again, full circle back to my Bulgarian background to do more of um, kind of like constant thinking about my looks. You know what I mean? I'm the person that's gonna have the nails. You know, I'm the person that's gonna have the hair. That's gonna, this is a lot of work. And a lot of work that I am putting and I will probably put until I am like 100, whatever. Hopefully I live long. But it is a branding thing, right? So now I've been told, for example, from my team, people have come to my office to say, hey, people say that you dress very nice, that you come with this. That is brand because people said that about me without me being in the room. And they said in different groupings, in different teams and constructs I'm part of. So it's something that I recognize as part of my brand, which also is freaking important because I got to maintain, right? Because I showed up without the nails one day in jet blue and somebody came and said, are you sick? Uh, is everything okay in your life? And I was like, yeah, what's happening? And he said, well, the nails, you don't have the nails. So I realized people are connecting my looks with much deeper things. And as a leader, you don't want people to think you're off your game, right? It's, it's as, a, as a leader, as a, as a person, it, 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 I mean, again, I don't want to say it's a warfare, but you know, strategy and business is a little bit like that. You can be weak. So these are things I observed, I internalized and learned. And I said, okay, this is my brand. So today it took me around 10 minutes to write these things about me. 10. I don't, I won't even say five. Maybe it took me five more minutes to find that picture. Why I'm saying this is, this is what brand is. I don't have to think about it because it's just who I am. And I've, I've, I've plenty to talk to you about, about how I live it. So being, having a brand and, and, and living the brand are two different things that need to be connected. So you have this authenticity, right? So you gotta make sure that whatever you, you think you are, you actually are doing the actions to do that because then you're gonna have a lot of, you think you're one person, people perceive different things. Okay, 
this was something I just spoke a little bit about, and I wanted to see if every, anyone has any questions. Before I continue, I'm gonna take a pause. Any reflections, thoughts? Don't be shy again, let's talk about this. Everyone, yeah, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat or you can share your um, screen and your microphone and ask. We have a nice small group here, so it's a very um, nice casual conversation. You know, I just wanna say that, you know, I think this is great stuff and, you know, I, I love your energy. You know, again, the the oh, the authenticity. I think it's it's critical, right? Like you can't you can't. I mean, I know that this there is a lot of you know talk about fake it till you make it. I, I mean, th there may be a little bit of that, you know, a little bit of that, but I think it has to be limited, and you know, it, it may help you on the path to become you know somebody that you want to become, but you know, it can't be like. You can't overdo it. So, uh, you know, I guess my question is, uh, you know, what are some actionable advice that you can share with us? I mean, I really think one of the things that I do a lot and I don't know that people do is talk to my best friend about who I am. You know, I think because to be authentic, the easiest path to being authentic is to be yourself, <laughs> right? The people that know your true self are the people that, that you have heard or who have stuck around you for some like lo long period of time. Because for that consistency to display itself, you need the timeline. So you need somebody who has seen you you know, in different situations and, and seeing how you react that can tell you like, hey, this is the type of person you are. So I think one of the first steps that all of you should, if you want to explore that, should do is go and talk to your friend or somebody or a sibling, somebody who knows you, who can honestly tell you some things about you that are good or bad, so you know. And then the other exercise that I've done is to go and sit down and think about who I want to be. Because there is a little bit of aspiration in branding that we shouldn't lose sight of. You know, what you see now is, is something that is the product of a very conscious, intentional work over 10 years. I didn't have that in 2011 when I went to JetBlue. I, I was still searching for who I was. I made mistakes and all that. But that that intentionality was with actions that I did. The other thing that I would add is th there is, um, I, I love, I had the privilege to, to meet uh, Michelle Obama. And Michelle Obama said, you know, when people tell, tell her like, well, how are you like this? You know, what, what is so, how do you get where you are? And she talked a lot about the fact that she's exactly the same person with her kids as she is with her husband, as she is with very big figures in the world and leaders of nations. That that authenticity of who she is does not, like she doesn't change. She's like, I don't have roles. And I think that's something that took me many years to, to kind of get in my head, you know? I used to be like, this is my business role. And then this is my, now I'm thinking like my mom role, my this role. And it's, and, and then I was like, what is that? Like, why, why do I need to have these roles? But, but I came up with that whole thing, right? And then the path, and I'm gonna go a little bit off, off track here, but the path to getting there and what she talked about and what I'll tell you, I did the exact same thing. That's why I love that she said it, is really therapy. And therapy is something that is in the States. I don't know, like Eastern Europe is completely against therapy, but it is, it cannot happen unless you love yourself. And you cannot love yourself and like yourself unless you're able to go and say, man, I, for example, for me, I'm very direct. I don't have patience. 
I, you know, I speak, I speak to, to, um, I, I curse sometimes, you know, I have sometimes hard time not getting my way, but these are all things I used to hate about myself, right? So then because I hated that, I would just go and try to be these people and have this like freaking army of roles that I would maintain. And then when I go to this process of being like, yeah, I'm that, I'm all these things. I'm working progress like all of us and nobody's freaking perfect. But yes, I have all these other good things and I am lovable and I, I, I'm I, great at apologizing. I perfected apology. Like I, I write cards, I buy bouquets, I buy books. I am very, I am like, I have a system of apologies now because it's part of who I am. And I have like, I can tell you, I invested in very expensive thank you cards because I know I got a... Um, but it's a classy thank you card because it's the brand again. See, but like I pivoted this kind of, and that's what she talked about is these shortcomings into again, kind of finding like a pivot to kind of embed it back to your identity, but with a, with a kind spin to it versus the inner critic and the self-deprecation and all that, like, uh, and now, and do I have my brother still telling me occasionally, what the hell, you're still, yeah. But now I don't go into that, like hiding, like, oh my God, no, I'm like, yeah, dude, I am, but guess what? I'm also helping you with this, this, and this, or, you know what I mean? I kind of own it. And I think that this is, that's why I was talking today that this is conversation. I can't have, I don't have a formula for you. I have start thinking type of advice, you know, think and reflect and be more intentional. Whenever you show up at any interaction, just, just take a 30 seconds to be like, what is this person going to think of me now? How, how do I look? How do I look like? Um, and even at the visual, try to be like more intentional and be like, you know what, I'm going to be the guy that shows up with a t-shirt every time, or I'm going to up my game and I'm going to have this blazer. I'm going to be the blazer guy. And when over time, when that happens consistently, people start making comments about you, you know, you've done it. Like, think about me then when somebody says, oh, look at Igor, he's showing up again, blah, blah. Now you have a brand. Now you did it. You connected it, and now people are making the connection. It's so um, powerful because then you're going to be like, damn, I, I now own the narrative. It's about owning your own narrative, essentially. But that owning only happens when you have faced your, I don't know, your things that you probably don't like about yourself. Um, okay, I, we have 15 minutes. I have more slides, but let's talk. Anybody else? Bring it on. Thank, I have, thank you very much. Sure. Good stuff. Uh, I have a question, which is one of the suggestions you made with so much of work being remote and online now because of the pandemic, um, your one suggestion for making sure your camera is on for your brand, especially at meetings and all, um, do you have any other, any other suggestions, particularly for so much being online? Yeah, I know. I mean, it's, again, it's it's what you want. I mean, I have intentionally left my background today, for example, because I wanted you to know I'm at home, so I want to warm you up, right? And I didn't want to put my background with the Petrova experience and make you feel like we're like, too, I didn't want to be too official, right? But I do have a background with my branding when I know I'm going to talk to the government, for example, because I know that's something that they require. I also make sure the lighting is correct. I mean, it's it's such a thing, but it's true. Yesterday, I was at, uh, actually two days ago, I was in Boston uh, visiting a client and they, for example, have in their offices, something I've never seen before, white backgrounds, like white shields, so that it can be a little more, um, um, yeah, Lucy, I, I gotta find it. I'm gonna find it. It's essentially a white backdrop with my logo. That's what it is. And then I have like a, a black ribbon under as a, as a black as a backdrop. Um, but my point is, just make sure you're being seen and heard is probably the base the basic. 
and I'm a big stickler for the school, for cameras on. I'm just, I just am because in my head, Zoom did not replace phone calls. Zoom replaced in-person meetings. And if we have cameras off, that implies we thought we were working on phone calls for the last, whatever, 50 years, which I don't think is true. We weren't. We had much deeper connections than that. Uh, Fabian, you had a, you were turning off your mic. So do you have a question? Uh, yes, I was waiting for everyone else to finish. Um, the reason why I've put both company and personal brand, uh, I'll give you a five minute history of myself. I've spent okay. uh, the better part of uh, the early 1990s to 2010 being a software developer. Okay. Uh, my life and career was basically fixing things in my head and typing them on a keyboard. Okay. Uh, I was more successful the less I interacted with people. Okay. Um, in the last 10 years, I have, uh, let me try and say, successfully tried to dodge the path of having to be a leader and uh, start up things and lead people because it meant then I would start interacting more with people. But after Corona happened, um, my life sort of went into a spiral where now I have to run my own business. Uh, I'd hoped it would remain small, but it continually keeps growing. So I need to interact with more and more people. But occasionally I find uh, the last 10 years being a manager sort of helped me communicate, but I think I still have a challenge transitioning from what you're defining as going towards a leader and maybe, I don't know, a technical implementer. Um, because in one, I didn't really need to communicate and talk to people. I would describe my the technical things that need to happen and that can be defined in one way and it's okay. But sometimes you'll um, sit down and you have a conversation with people, for example, trying to explain what it is you're doing to laymen and uh, you find that you, you're, you're not actually communicating. So I, I, I don't know, how, how do you handle that transition and then how are you able to also separate? Uh, because in my head, the company and the and my brand, I feel are sort of like the same thing. Um, um, I hope I make some sense there. Hey, Fabian, thank you. Um, I put I put the question there. It looks like we lost Lillian, but hopefully she'll join. Maybe it's a technical issue. Um, I put your question as you know, how does, how do I project being a leader as a brand for you? I think that's your question when that hasn't um, sort of been something, say that's something you want to build on, right? Compared to what your, what your experience has been, um, yeah. right? Previously. Okay. So, um, so when hopefully Liliana will join us, uh, I know she has uh, another 10 minutes before her next, um, her next schedule. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Um, in the meantime, you can, you know, you can ask them and I can write them or, you know, you can just ask. Um, and just, you know, just as a background, Liliana and I went to business school together at NYU in New York. Um, and so that's how I know Liliana. And we went on a trip to, um, we went on a trip to South Africa um, and I can, I can definitely confirm that she is a fun and life-loving person <laughs> so um yeah does does anybody have like a, you know even if you just have like comments or thoughts to share um you know feel free to it's casual here i have a question that, that smile is loaded with happy memories <laughs> yeah how about uh, audrey do you want to go next yeah, I just wanted to share uh, many years ago when I was starting out my career, I had a colleague who said that she would often add uh, business associates or people that she had met during networking events on Facebook. And I was like, oh, okay. So I started a different Facebook page just for business people. And somewhere along the line, a few months later, I realized that that was ridiculous. <laughs> and uh, it was just going to be too hard to keep up, you know, and um, so then I started adding um, business people on my friend uh, Facebook, and it's been fine, you know, I, um, 
I realized that there's nothing wrong with being authentic and showing your true personality to people that are in the business world. So uh, that was kind of a learning experience for me. Hey, Liliana, welcome back. Um, just to catch you up, Audrey just shared that, um, you know, in terms of building her brand, she wasn't sure, you know, about inviting business associates to be her Facebook connections. And she did, and she wasn't sure, but she was okay with the decision after that. Um, so Lili she might, Liliana might be settling in. Um, does anybody else have any uh, questions or thoughts to share? Oh, there you are, Liliana. Yeah. Do you want to? Um, do you want to um, also? Um, Fabian's question was: how, how does he he go from projecting himself as a leader, as a brand? And I think this is like a change that he wants to make. So the question is for him to change how he's a leader versus an individual contributor. Is that the question? Yes, yes. Oh, that's a tough one. Well, I mean, listen, I think I think you have to do a leadership type of things that unfortunately is unpaid work. <laughs> To, for lack of a better word, I think that's the fastest way to tell you what you need to do. You need to do things that are not directly paid. So, you know, what I what I would say is thought leadership. So doing webinars, setting up, writing articles on LinkedIn about the topic that you are an expert on, um, mentoring people. You know, I had some slides to share with all of you about, you know, I'm I'm a WeWork lab advisor. So people call me randomly about things that I help them for just because I'm part of a community on LinkedIn that provides also any career advice to uh, any uh, people that are not, not, you know, that need help and some a leg up. Um, I have a partnership with the business, with the school, the public school system in New York to get high school students to work for us as interns. That means I don't get much value out of them, right? Because they're high school students, but we help them grow as careers. So this, this when you start talking about these things with your prospects and online, people are going to start seeing you as a leader, as someone who is, because leader essentially is a giver. And, and, and again, good leader, is an expert and a giver. So how are you going to make sure people see you as, as leader means essentially how are people going to start getting some insights from you and how are you going to show you give back? Do you, do we have any other questions? Cause I want to make sure that I'm sorry about this drop. I don't know what's happening with the internet. Uh, that we have other questions coming up. Somebody made a comment about the, the, the font on the logo. That is true. It is the same font. <laughs> Consistency. Yeah, if you have a question, now's your chance to ask. We only have a few more minutes. So while we have Liliana here, who um, runs her own company for branding, she works with other businesses, um, you know, is very experienced, very talented. Um, I, you know, we had a long conversation and Liliana told me like what she accomplished during her time at JetBlue and it was super, super impressive. Um, but yeah, if you have, if you have a question, now's your chance to ask. I have a question. Um, all right. So what do you recommend when you work in a competitive um, work environment and, but you also have to collaborate? And then you have maybe new people coming in, um, like a new, you know, new employees. And then, so you're all trying to build your brands, right? And it's a comp you're all, it's a competitive work environment. And then a new person comes in and really like is excelling at that. Um, and so now I have, I, now I'm feeling pressured Mm -hmm. to do more right and to be more visible um but i i really haven't been yet 
is the, is the culture of your organization going to be one that that person would get ahead? How is the culture of the of the company? Sales. Sales. Okay. Yeah. Recruiting, sales. So we're we're trying to brand ourselves online on LinkedIn as recruiters. Um, and then we're also, you know, competing in sales. And you have somebody on the team that came and is kind of like pushing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm a senior recruiter We and we have a new person in and, and, you know, I don't want to compete with this person. This person's on my team, but I'm feeling like inside, mm -hmm. I feel the pressure and I feel the competition but I don't want to compete, but I feel like I need to step up my game. Yes. Okay. And, and um, is that person your peer or more senior to you? No, she's, she's newer. So she's not senior. She's a oh, peer. She's not senior yet. She's, she's doing... not senior yet. No, but she's doing senior things probably. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I need yeah. to step up my game. Well, I mean, so listen, I mean, I guess my, my thing, I have th several thoughts, you know, the first thing I would say is, I mean, I, I had a relationship like this in JetBlue with a woman and it, it's, it takes a lot of um, emotional intelligence and maturity to have a good working relationship with somebody like this. Um, I always go for the allyship versus conflict ship, especially when I got senior. I feel like when I was junior, we were more competitive and kind of was more like, you know, tactical, if you will, where you do one thing, I do one thing. Um, when I got senior, I was like, these people, they never will disappear in your life. So then it's more about how are you going to make that person um, not eat you? You know what I mean? They'll eat somebody else. They're, they're that type of person, which is fine but how do you position yourself in her trajectory who are you for her back to branding right yeah so i would go and make her your ally go and help her onboard her give her where the the, the skeletons are because she will always remember that you didn't go competing head to head, that you help her. And then whatever she does, she's going, she may even take you with her. And that's exactly what I did with the last time. And it played very well because I immediately recognized she's going to be a powerhouse. And I spent the whole week onboarding her. And my team was like, what are you doing? I was like, you wait. And that's what happened. She was the one that in the big meetings was like, where's Liliana? She was the one that would come back and say, they said this, do you know this? And I think it's when you recognize that force of nature, instead of fighting it, figure out how to become part of their good side and just ride their wave. Okay. And it will make your life less anxious as well. And it's, a, it's not a move people expect. But it's a good one. And I'm part of Chief where we are talking a lot about this. Specifically, I don't know if that person is a woman, but you know, women, we don't we don't do this enough. Right. We kind of do it to each other. So maybe it's time that we make this because guys don't do that. They're just gonna grab a beer. Mm -hmm. And we're the, the ones that are like, oh my God, like it's just in our DNA. So we kind of have to fight our, <laughs> our nature, you know? Okay. Try it. Try it and yeah. let, let, let me know. So I'm curious to see where that goes. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Anyone else? Last one. Last one. Last. If there is any question, then we go. Going once. Going twice. Um, yes, anybody who would like to talk to me, I'm seeing some um, um, comments. Maybe I can get a copy of the comments because I didn't look at the chat at all today. If that's possibility, maybe that would be nice. 
And then um, I, you can find me, um, I'm very active on LinkedIn. I have my own page uh, and then I also have the company page, which is the Petrova experience. I didn't talk to you about how the company reflects me because we didn't get there, but uh, you can find, I'm very, I would respond to messages on LinkedIn uh, in my, just reach out. Um, and then uh, we can take it from there and schedule some time. I'll be happy to speak with anyone who wants to speak. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Eliana. Yashma, thank you for organizing. And oh, you, oh, you're welcome. Um, actually, I need to stop recording. Hey, Rashma.